So this is a warning from Steve Gonkalvis to Brian Koberger, supposedly. So I'm going to read this. This is an article from Newsweek. Uh, it says, Steve Gonkalvis, the father of one of the four University of Idaho students fatally stabbed allegedly by Brian Koberger, issued a stark warning for the suspected unaliver who is scheduled for a preliminary hearing on June 26th. Koberger was arrested on charges of four counts of first degree M and one count of felony burglary in the fatal, uh, you know, of Kaylee Gonkalvis, 21, Madison Mogan, 21, Ethan Chapin, 20, and Zaina Kernodal, 20, inside an off-campus house. The victims were found, you know, uh, unalived, not all in bed, on November 13th. And uh, by the way, I want to pause this real quick because somebody put in the comments in one of my previous videos about Idaho 4 about they were said that they were all found in bed i want to let you know and i stated it in my video the coroner came out multiple times and stated different things and i also stated the time that she mentioned that they were all in bed and that was the first time that she had a press so you can go back to the local the local clips and you can look it up for yourself or you can go back to the show because we played it too and you can see how the first time that's what she told everybody was that they were all in bed and asleep first time she changed it multiple times please check your videos anyway koberger was arrested for those charges they were found on november 13th in an off-campus residence near the university of idaho Koberger was arrested on December 30th at his parents' house in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania. He has not yet entered a plea, and his former attorney said that his client was, quote, eager to be exonerated. And the former attorney even came out and said that BK made sure he put that in the statement. He was very adamant about that. New documents related to the unaliving case were released last week. Mike Baker of the New York Times obtained 166 pages related to the search of Koberger's apartment near Washington State University. I can't wait to see the evidence and then I'm going to bring it, Steve Kinkalvis Kaylee's father told ABC News on Friday. And he's going to realize that this is the family that's going to make sure he doesn't get away with it. The new documents contain the items seized from his apartment, which include several possible hair strands, a computer tower, and two stains that appeared to be blood, among other items. Newsweek previously reported on the items that they were seized from KB's apartment near the Washington State University campus, where he was pursuing his PhD at the time of the unalivings in November. The Gonkalvis family, a family with five children, said they were not able to pin down a connection between their daughter and Koberger, with Christy Gonkalvis, Kaylee's mother, saying that she gave long and hard thought to whether Kaylee, 21, knew the suspected unaliver. <clears throat> we've talked as a family, you know, we've done a lot of research on what's out there. None of it makes sense, Christy told ABC News. The mother described her reaction the first time she saw Koberger at an initial court appearance, saying that she was completely overwhelmed and that she thought she was going to pass out. My daughter saw him face to face in a very different light than we saw him sitting there in court looking very meek, said Christy. Kaylee was unalived weeks before her early graduation from the University of Idaho as she was set to move to Texas for a new job, according to ABC News. Steve Kinkalvis has been vocal about seeking justice in the unaliving case and has often criticized the way the Moscow Police Department handled the case, according to the Crime Wire. The Kinkalvis family launched a Facebook page to keep track of messages, tips, and information related to their daughter's unaliving. The page has 39,000 followers as of Friday afternoon. Meanwhile, the newly released documents also include a list of items that were taken for presumptive chemical tests for the red stuff. However, 
Only two of the items collected tested positive for the red stuff. They were listed as reddish brown stain on uncased pillow south side of bed and a mattress cover on bed in northeast room on ed edge facing doorway. Multiple stains pre present on cover collected after one positive result. Other stains not tested. Wow. The list read, Jennifer Coffin-Daffer, a former FBI agent, told Newsweek last week, shout out, Kout, if there's blood, it could be his, it could be their victims, it could be a mixture of both. Still, Coffin-Daffer said that the items that test positive for blood are a big win. Meanwhile, Christy Concalvis said that it is important for her family to be united and as strong as, and strong as they attend the preliminary hearing next month, according to ABC News, I've never been to a preliminary trial before. I have no idea what to expect. I have no idea what we're going to hear, but I know that I've got my son and my daughter will be there and my sister and my husband, she said. Meanwhile, Steve said that some of the family members reached out to two roommates who survived the attack that day. He added, it's, going, it's good to make sure that everybody going through this has somebody there to help them.